Hey folks, my name is Jen and today we are going to do the end of the year wrap up. So over the course of 2023 I read 87 books which was actually beyond my goal for the year. I set the goal to read 60 books by the end of the year and yeah I surpassed it so we are gonna get into my stats. Um, I'm not using Goodreads stats anymore because it looks like they're not doing that year like stat information anymore. At least I've been trying to find it and they don't even have like past years or anything. There's no nothing on there unless I've totally missed something. It looks like they possibly have done away with it. I don't know what's going on with them. They're so I am a complete and utter dingleberry um, because I woke up this morning and checked Goodreads after I saw on Instagram that some of their friends had their year in books and I was like, wait, it's gone. It's not on there anymore. No, it's on there. It's on there. I just didn't know how to access it because, like I said, I'm a complete and utter dingleberry. Adding my Goodreads stats now, um, I read 87 books, like I mentioned, 23,274 pages. The shortest book I read was Fertilized in Space by Fiona Thomason. That one was 17 pages. Um, I listened to an audiobook, so. Um, the longest book I read was Bleak House by Charles Dickens, which was 1,037 pages. The average book length I read was 267 pages. The most popular book, which was shelved over 4 million times, was The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, and the least shelved was The Camp by Richard Brinsley Sheridan, which was also shelved by like one other person. <laughs> My average rating was a 4.4. .4. My highest rated book that I read this year was Excuse Me As I Kiss the Sky by Rudy Francisco. My first review was Call Us What We Carry by Amanda Gorman, and my last was uh, for uh, Christmas Carol and Other Stories by Charles Dickens. We'll just focus on the stats that I have kept um, in my little journal. So first I have my 2023 by genre. I'll try to put a better image of this up, but this is like the bar graph basically that I made and kept track of throughout the year. So over the course of the year, um, I tried to double check my math last night, so I'm fairly certain I'm accurate, but um, over the course of 2024, I read one adventure, 10 classics, one erotica, 19 fantasy, seven graphic novels, two historical fiction, five horror, six literary fiction slash contemporary, two manga, which actually is like the lowest I think I've ever read in a year of manga. <laughs> it's weird. Um, 11 mysteries, 2 nonfiction, which I think was also the lowest, um, 5 picture books, or what I counted as picture books. I'm actually making a new genre bar for them for next year. Um, 3 plays, 3 poetry collections, 9 romance novels, and 1 sci-fi. And then as far as like type of books, uh, of course the main one that I read is physical copies, um, whether they are my own or borrowed. Um, but I read 76 physical books this year, 9 audiobooks, and 2 ebooks. As far as ratings go, I had um, f 44 5 stars, uh, 37 4 stars, 5 3 stars, 0 2 or 1 star books, and I think that's helped along largely by the fact that I'm allowing myself to DNF. Um, and I also had 2 books which were unrated, and I have been leaving um, memoirs and autobiographies unrated because it just feels weird to rate somebody telling their story. Um, and also, since last year, and I actually started reading technically erotica books, I have decided to leave them unrated as well because for the most part, the stuff that I read 
I don't think it's meant to be titillating. I think it's meant to be just hilarious entertainment. But at the same time, I'm not really sure how to rate it at all because yeah so I just I leave erotica unrated as well because I have no idea how I'm supposed to rate them and then we can get into uh, the by month reading uh, selection in January I read six books and they were as follows call us what we carry by Amanda Gorman Evelina by Fanny Burney, Shuna's Journey by Hal Miyazaki, Westmark by Lloyd Alexander, Color Scheme by Niall Marsh, and Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. In February I also read six books, and at least one or two of them were for the February Regency readathon, which I did not technically complete. <laughs> Those books, uh, the books I read were Good Poems, which is collected and edited by Garrison Keillor, the Camp by Richard Brinsley Sheridan, Mort by Terry Pratchett, Get a Life Chloe Brown by Tully Hibbert, Undead and Unwed, and Undead and Unemployed, and both of those are by Mary Janice Davidson. I also DNF'd three books in February, and those were Jane Austen's Secret Rebel by Helena Kelly, as well as It Ends With Us and Verity, both by Colleen Hoover. In March, I read 14 books, and a good chunk of those were for middle grade March um, readathon, which I also technically did not complete. Stinker from Space by Pamela F. Service. The Egypt Game by Zilpha Keatley Snyder. City of Light, City of Dark by Avi and Brian Floca. Take a Bow BC by Johnny Hart. The Spirebook Chronicles, Book One, The Field Guide by Holly Black and Tony Dieterlizzi. Legends and Lattes by Talia Hibbert. Joy Picks a Swallow the Key by Jack Gantos, You're Not For Real Snoopy by Charles M. Schultz, Dennis the Menace and His Pal Joey by Hank Ketchum, Weird Sisters by Tony... Tony? Yikes. Terry Pratchett, <laughs> Baseball in April and Other Stories by Gary Soto, Ice Plant Barbarians by Ruby Dixon, Who Da Are You by Huda Fame, and Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. In March, I also DNF'd three books, and those were A Mango Shaped Space by Wendy Moss, and also Throttled and The Fine Print, both by Lauren Asher. In April, I also read six books. You'll, you'll notice that there's a pattern with the amount of books that I read in a month fairly often. <laughs> uh, those books were The Wee Free Men by Terry Pratchett, Sorcery, also by Terry Pratchett, The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde, The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 1, and Volume 2, both by Nagabe, and The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. I also did to one book in April, and that was The Inspector and Mrs. Jerry Jeffries, and that was by Emily Brightwell. In May, I read 10 books. Those were Spinsters in Jeopardy by Niall Marsh, Angus Dong's and Full Frontal Snogging by Louise Renison, Understood Betsy by Dorothy Canfield Fisher, Fertilized in Space by Fiona Thompson, Beauty by Robin McKinley, Scales of Justice by Niall Marsh, Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut, Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw, Mouse Volume One, My Father Bleeds History, and Mouse Volume Two, and Here My Troubles Began, both by Art Spiegelman. In June, I read nine books, and those were My Secret War by Mary Pope Osborne, Anne of Green Gables by Alan Montgomery, The Castrol. And The Beggar Queen, both by Lloyd Alexander. Kiss of the Highlander by Cara Marie Moaning. A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Brevity and Echo, which is a short story anthology by various writers. Tribute by Nora Roberts. And The Moon Lady by Amy Tan and Gretchen Shields. I also DNF'd two books in June, and those were The Happy Prince by Oscar Wilde and A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Bur Burroughs. In July, I read six books. Northern Lights by Nora Roberts, The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King, Common Sense by Thomas Paine, The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, 
and the Titan's Curse, all by Rick Roy Orton. And then in August, I read five books. Busman's Honeymoon by Dorothy L. Sayers. The Battle of the Labyrinth. The Last Olympian. And The Demigod Files, all by Rick Roy Orton. And I finish off the month with Billy Summers by Stephen King. I also did enough to two books in August, and those were uh, Beachfront Bakery, A Killer Cupcake uh, by Fiona Grace, and Fourth Wing by Rebecca Hieros. In September, I read six books, and they were as follows. The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. Pumpkinheads by Faith Aaron Hicks and a Rainbow Roll. Seance Tea Party by Ramona Yee. Sacred Sins by Nora Roberts. The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. And Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Also DNF'd two books? Yes, two books in September. And those were Expedition Wida by Barry Clifford. And Billionaire's Second Chance Bride. And that was by Shadonna Richards. In October I read four books. The Shining by Stephen King which I don't know where I put my copy, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Small Spaces by Catherine Arden, The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, and The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. I also DNF'd one book in October, and that was Elemental Thief by Rachel Morgan. Remember, I read five books. The Secret of Chimneys by Agatha Christie, Excuse Me As I Kiss the Sky by Rudy Francisco, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, The Goggin and the Boy by Lloyd Alexander, and Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie. And in December, I read 10 books. Uh, there's a lot of audiobooks in December. Um, so the first was The Christmas Card Crime and Other Stories by various Golden Age mystery novelists, uh, The Labors of Hercules, and Dumb Witness, both by Agatha Christie, uh, A Christmas Carol, which I actually read twice. I listened to an audiobook and then I read this book, um, which is A Christmas Carol and Other Stories. So I did read A Christmas Carol out of here, but then I also read the other stories in this, other Christmas stories in this collection. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. This was at Thompson Hall by Anthony Trollope. Barbarian Alien by Ruby Dixon, Midwinter Murder by Agatha Christie, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. And that was it folks. That was every damn thing that I read this year. Uh, even though I have books completely and utterly piled around me, um, it still doesn't feel like I really read that much. I guess maybe it feels like that because over the past um, few years I've read so much I guess like last year I read a hundred books um, in 2021 I read 144 although most of those were like um, picture books or like kid books and stuff like that um, the previous year I read I don't know that it was also like a hundred and something books um, yeah it it feels like this year I haven't really got around to that much. I am overall fairly happy with what I read. I think this was, I double checked and this is the year I've DNF'd the most books <laughs> of the past few years. It's basically since I've been keeping track in like 2019. Um, this is the most books that I have um, DNF'd or allowed myself to DNF. But um, overall, yeah, I think it, it was a pretty good reading month, um, fairly, reading month, reading year, fairly enjoyable overall, um, but of course I do have my tippy top books, like the books that like made my reading year basically, and I will be, um, getting a video out to you sometime later this month about the best things that I read this month, and of course also the worst things that I read this month, which Thankfully, um, I will say there weren't that many of them. I have a couple, um, and then of course I have the dishonorable mentions, which are anything that I DNF'd, but yeah, those will be coming out to you later on. But yeah, overall, not too 
not too shabby. I think overall the year was pretty good. Um, well, re reading wise, anyway, um, yeah. And also pretty good on here too, because I hit 100 over 100 subscribers, which is pretty awesome. And I'm really happy to have you all here. And it's also, I think I've said this before, it's also bewildering to imagine that anyone wants to listen to me uh, just ramble into the ether. But um, I'm really grateful that y'all are here anyway. Uh, anyway, that was my reading year. Uh, I hope you all had a pretty successful reading year as well. And um, here's to 2024. Anyway, bye guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for always watching. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, please consider doing so. And I will see you all in the next video.